In the name of our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Amen. Gary and I both have an app on our phones that we enjoy playing called Wordscapes. It's a game of mini crossword puzzles. And for each play, you're given six or seven letters to create words, different combinations of the same six or seven letters. And then you fill in the crossword grid with the various words. And Gary and I have talked about how we get stuck. We stare at the letters and can't figure out the unique word needed to complete the grid. But if we leave the game for a little while and go back to it later, we almost immediately see that last word. Why was it that the word was right in front of us when we were playing the game earlier, but we didn't see it? We encounter this dilemma in many ways in our lives. Romantic comedies often revolve around this premise. I'm remembering the movie Maid of Honor with Patrick Dempsey. He and the co-stars have been best friends since college, but never dated. And now she is engaged to be married and has asked him to be her maid of honor. And while he is in the comedic throes of learning all about wedding planning and dealing with the female bridesmaids, who think he is woefully unprepared to be planning anything that has to do with this wedding, he realizes after all these years that he is in love with his dear friend who is about to be married to another man. And because this is a romantic comedy, I'm going to leave it up to you to figure out how the movie ends. But let's just say it was right in front of him all along. And so it was with the Israelites, right in front of them. They have had enough. Yes, they are free from the clutches of the mighty Pharaoh, but now they have been wandering in the wilderness for six weeks, and they are tired, and they are hungry, and they are complaining. The Lord hears them and tells Moses, I'm going to rain bread down from heaven. Moses receives these saving words firsthand, straight from God. Moses tells his brother Aaron to gather these people together and tell them to trust in the Lord. The Lord understands their needs. And while they are all gathered, they look out in the wilderness and they see with their own eyes the glory of the Lord. The Lord tells Moses to tell the people gathered that that very evening, the Lord will provide meat to eat. And in the morning, the Lord will provide their fill of bread. And sure enough, what happened? That evening, God gives the Israelites meat to eat, an abundance of quails. And in the morning, covering the ground is a flaky substance. Just the day before, the people saw with their own eyes the glory of the Lord, and they were given meat to eat as promised. Yet in the morning, even with this promise fulfilled and knowing God's other promise for their fill of bread, they see the flaky substance and ask, what is it? God is providing right in front of them yet they don't see it. It's such an enduring human trait for all of us. Scripture is here to remind us to open ourselves to that which is right in front of us, God's love, which alleviates heartache, inspires endurance, focuses us outward, emanates joy. John tells us through the gospel 
work for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. So what is the food that Jesus gives us? What is right in front of us? Ephesians helps us out, urging us to live with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Exactly what Jesus teaches us. We are human, and life is hard. Health issues, relationship issues, career challenges, public policy differences can wear us down. And sometimes we lose patience. We let go of bearing with one another in love. Sometimes it's a whole lot easier to act out, to find fault randomly, than to address the unease, the discomfort, the hurt inside ourselves. We don't always see how unrelated, unresolved issues in our lives are influencing how we are responding in the moment to some unconnected frustration. This human condition is precisely why we need the bread of life. We do need to remind ourselves about this food right in front of us. We need the love that Jesus embodies, the love that sustains all and nurtures all and endures all, the love ever present from Jesus and ever possible through one another. This love is not a sentiment, but a commitment to the common good. Loving heals our soul. It's a leap of faith when we are hurting, but loving heals our soul while healing others. Whenever we are ready to act out, let's take a deep breath and call on Jesus' sacrificial love. I was so saddened this week to see the backlash from Simone Biles pulling out of the Olympics. She might be the most well-known of all of our Olympic athletes this summer, and the weight of the world was on her shoulders to win gold. She pulled out for mental health reasons, she is experiencing a disconnect between her mind and her body when she is performing, which of course is physically dangerous. Many people rallied around her this week, commending her for her bravery and prior prioritizing her mental and physical health. But too many people lashed out against her. I, I don't know why. Perhaps they are disappointed that they won't get to see her perform. Perhaps they are disappointed in a lower medal count for the U.S. Perhaps they feel some resentment because they wanted to bow out of a difficult situation in their lives, but they didn't, and there were consequences. I don't know their reasons. But I do know disappointment in my life. I understand that emotion. I get it. When we are hurting, let's take a deep breath and ask ourselves, what is achieved by deriding a fellow human being? What is achieved? Perhaps we experience some momentary relief from our own hurt and disappointment, but we will not experience lasting relief, only lingering pain from some unrelated, unresolved issue. Let's take a deep breath and allow Jesus' love to heal our soul. 
we know Jesus' love is eternal, always right in front of us. I love the way the great singer-songwriter Carol King think one fine day, I feel the earth move where you lead me. I love the way Carol King puts this fact of life to words in her song right here all along. She sings, in your eyes I see the reason. In your smile, I see the road that takes me home. In my heart, I know the answer. All the things I look so hard to find were right here all along. Amen.